Hey guys, good morning. Welcome to my crib. Welcome to my first installation of my bike commute vlog. Um, I got a new GoPro. And so I'm just testing it out, seeing how it works. Um, and I also got a new microphone, the Editige ETM008. It's a unidirectional mic. So I wanna see how well it works. But I also got another one in the mail, the ETM001. That's an omnidirectional. That might suit me better. So I hope it's working. All right. So this is my bike commute. Um, every morning it's getting a little darker when I leave. And That should be interesting and a little colder. Like today it was 55 degrees and yesterday it was 64. So I don't know, this weather has been unpredictable. Guess what that is? Can you guess where I am? I'm not gonna reveal it. Probably in another video, but you can take a look and tell me if you think you know where I am. Um, I'm bike commuting quite a distance. I don't know if I'll play the whole video. And maybe just the highlights. Because this commute is about an hour and 15 minutes. I know. Hey, you can watch it twice. Um, all right, so why would I bike commute an hour and 15 minutes? Well, it started off as exercise. Well, I wasn't bike commuting till many years later. I've been biking since the early 90s. Gosh, it's windy out here. I wonder how the audio is. Morning. So I've been biking since the early 90s, but I really didn't start bike commuting till like 2011. And then for about two years, three years, maybe two. I did a pretty non-stop, pretty much non-stop. Um, and then I got really bored and I hated it. Because I think by commuting that much in one day, you can get burnt out. And I did it almost every day. <laughs> Crazy. And um, I got rid of parking at work. And then I learned later that I had four free parking passes. I learned that like an hour and a half, uh, a year and a half later. And I never took light rail. I would just bike. But it was mostly during the dry seasons. Not too cold when it's not too cold. Um, let's see. So what prepared me for it, I knew it would take a lot of planning, like clothes and route. Because I'm taking this trail now along this river, 
but then I have to go through downtown and so I found a place that didn't have too much fast expressway traffic because I don't like that kind of traffic biking's dangerous and I know that for a fact so what prepared me for it was I used to exercise and do long rides. I think back in 2007 or eight. I just started biking up the river to the lake. And that was about 21 to like 23 mile ride depending on what route I took and I always wanted to do uh, this ride called the AIDS ride at the time it's where you ride your bike from San Francisco to LA I always wanted to do that but I never did I think the names changed for that ride and they would tell you how to train and uh, I don't know I just got into it um, my man is in the bike industry so I'm fortunate because He's got the knowledge about product. And he works on my bike whenever I need it. To tell you the truth, he built up my bike and I've never had any problems unless I wrecked. And then he would have to fiddle with it but I think I think when you get when you have your bike built up by a professional with the best parts um, you're pretty much good to go because when I see other people with bikes and they're not so good. They always have to have their bike tuned up. It's because they either had it built up wrong or they leave it in the rain in their yard. My bikes, I keep them in the house. I only have two. Well, maybe three they're old though I think all my bikes are older than eight years old this is a Scott Contessa uh, all right so this is one of the highlights of the ride it's a bridge it was originally named after a guy who I believe he started he founded the local state school nearby but it was controversial because back then he was into eugenics and he practiced races ideas so they changed the name do you know where I am they changed the name of this area the park does this look familiar or does this interest you I know some of y'all may not be from this area 
it might be interesting to see other commutes. Good morning. Uh, I'm not in the best shape. I had a four day weekend and I didn't do anything. All right. This is a beautiful river. I wonder if you can see it. I can't remember if I have this in wide or super view. I think wide is the best setting. Super view is too much. Unless you unfish eye it. Morning. So I'm lucky because I live by this trail and it's a very unique area because I don't believe there's a trail like this any in any other place in the US I know that when they have a certain bicycle race in this state the riders come out here and test out the course and they also test out this trail because I know somebody who was riding one day and saw Team Radio Shack and that year was before it was a couple of years before Lance Armstrong was found to be a drug user and he was riding on here and my friend got well he's my coworker he showed me a video of him trailing that team, Team Radio Shack. And I can't remember what year that was. I think, I think Lance Armstrong was in two different races out here. I don't know all blur. I just remember going to that Amgen thing the first time and it was so fast. Just watching them pass through. And it was really kind of sad because the guy that won that day for that portion of the race, I was standing outside of his trailer and he was headed towards the podium. He just came out of his little trailer. Nobody was standing outside. <laughs> and he obviously won that portion of the race. But if you went over to Lance Armstrong's trailer, it was mobbed. Like 10, 10 people deep. It was kind of sad. You know, name recognition. But that other guy, he just came out of the trailer and we were like surprised because we didn't know it was his trailer. And he came out and we're like, whoa. And like one guy was clapping as that guy rode off to the podium down the street. Anyhow, it's dry here. Can you guess where I am? And it's um, mid-August. Anyhow, on this blog 
don't know, what should I talk to you about? How to do it, how to get started, what to wear. Maybe some tips, basic bike tips. That'd be good. I guess I could shoot some of that. Okay, well, the first time I bike commuted, the bike trail was no big deal. But going through downtown, <laughs> it was time consuming. A lot of stop and go at the lights, the signs. I did something funny when I first bike commuted on the first day. I used to go to every stoplight. I press the crosswalk button <laughs> oh my god I was so late that first day I was 20 minutes late I didn't know the bike lanes were metered <laughs> you know so I was pressing the button like a pedestrian would <laughs> Okay, when you bike commute, you have to be careful. When you're riding in a bike lane, watch for motorists in their cars. Because a lot of people die or get in accidents because they're hitting a motorist who's just opened their door. Like you just swerve or just hit the door and you can get injured. And swerving into traffic you know, that'd be horrible. So, okay, so these guys are passing me up. Those guys are a big deal. I can never ride that fast. Oh, maybe because I'm not paying attention to my gears. I'm not very fast. I think my average is like 14.3, but that's good. Because I think when I started, it was like in the 12 miles per hour average. And I just started up again. I took a few years off, maybe two, because it's dangerous. It really is. I mean, I got into really bad bike acts, axes. Um, all by myself but there are other times many close calls like daily I'm about to get hit by a motorist but in the beginning I was more aggressive downtown but now I'm just very cautious Since people use phones, I don't trust any motorists. Yeah, I almost got hit by a kid that was texting. Um, people are just always texting. So I always wear neon. Not today because I left my neon windbreaker at work yesterday and I use this flashing headlight it's 
pretty good light. It's new. My other 300 lumen light broke because I dropped it too many times. And I have a flashing red tail light. I try to make myself as visible as possible. I wonder how this mic is working out. It's really windy. Well, windy into my ears. I don't know, maybe because I'm usually wearing ear pods. I don't notice the wind, but it seems windy in my ears at least. All right, do you know where I am? I think, I think people who only live in this area would know where I am. And if you don't live in this area, you can check it out. It's really nice. No cars. But this is my only, this is only on my first 11 miles of my bike commute, you know? Then I'll take you downtown. You could check that out. I wonder if people can see my GoPro. You're on candid camera. Did you know you can videotape in public anything? Because if it's in public, you can do it. That's what boggles me about people in public places that get angry at videographers who work in news, like during massive things that should be recorded, like chaotic situations. I think it's important that they're allowed to videotape scenes like that for evidence. Like who's there? I mean, what would we do if we didn't have all that video for that Boston Marathon bombing? We would have never found those idiots. If it's in public, you can be taped. But some people try to deter that, like, I don't know why cops get so angry, like, get away, or, I guess because they're just fearful. Or they don't know the rules. Morning. Morning on what can be videotaped. Okay, this is a nice area during the summer because it's nice and shady. It's also an excellent place to have family photos done. Because it looks like it would be. Not that I would know why. place is great for jogging. You have the granite paths on the edge of the bike trail. Crushed granite. You can see beautiful little squirrels climbing trees. Wild turkey. Jackrabbits. Cottontail. I've seen coyotes. I hear them yapping at night. That was kind of creepy. I heard them yapping in the bushes at night. Well, behind the bushes. That was the last time I rode at night. I try not to ride at night because it's scary. But I have, I'll go with a person. No, I'm not doing it alone. 
because there's mountain lions out here. And that's when they hunt. No thanks. I've seen mountain lion before. I thought I did on the bike trail and I was scared. I didn't have my glasses on. It was in the distance chasing something, but I really wasn't sure. So I've studied mountain lion pictures since then. So if I see something that I think is a mountain lion, I'll know for sure. They have big tails. My girlfriend said she was jogging nearby here and she saw one in distance. This is like maybe 10 years ago. She said she stopped jogging and then she started walking backwards until she never saw it again. Until it was out of her sight, I mean. <clears throat> okay, where am I? How many bridges have I crossed? This is my second bridge. And it smells, smells like bat, bat droppings or guano under here, smelly. Okay, so I don't know, this area right here, Oh my god, did you just see that? I just got pelted by bugs. Okay. There's a sign right here that says Star Thistle Free Zone. I have. How do they do that? I don't know. I don't get it. I always wanted to Google that. What the heck does that mean? How do they get rid of the star thistles? How do they not grow back? I want to know. All right. So it's really dry out here. Hint, hint. I'll try not to breathe so much. I think I'm too late, huh? Because I've been breathing a lot. It's gross. It's an annoying sound. I'm sure this mic is picking it all up too. Look how pretty this tree line path is. You'll want to bike here. Y'all just want to bring your bikes out here and make this your destination and ride. And if you can't, you can review this video. <laughs> yeah, not. Okay, so the sun's coming out. I used to leave a lot earlier to compensate for the possibility of getting a flat. I used to do that, but I haven't. And then I'd go to work and do some weights, but not lately. I need to lose. Oh, I should tell you, when I first started biking in 2007, 2007, 2008, I, in a matter of two months, two and a half months, I lost two and a half sizes just from biking like 23 miles, 21 to 23 miles every day. Maybe I took one day off, but I lost 10 of weight. 
going up to the lake. Did I say river? Biking to the lake. It's uphill. So it's a pretty good workout. There's more of an incline in certain spots. Especially near the end or the end of reaching the lake. That's a, a little bit of a climb. Some people may laugh at me, but to me it's a climb. this GoPro I kind of like it I never thought I would need it unless I was a surfer or skier but in bright situations it's pretty good you know the video looks good the pictures look pretty good but you have to make sure you're not backlit or anything and your lighting's good in dark situations, not so good, you know. Um, I'm looking into a, a gimbal so I could have steady cam shots. Okay, so these guys are parked in the bike lane. I'm gonna break the law and run the sidewalk because I'm scared of cars hit me because they're all eager to get to work. Okay, do you see it? There's a big landmark right there. It's very important. What is it? It's a fort. What fort is it? Do you know? Oh. I'm hiding that phone number from you because I don't want to give it away what area code we're in. talking about. So, how much does your morning commute cost? Do you know? This one cost me about 850 calories. That's what, in an hour and 15 minutes and waking up early. Oh. Flowers I encounter are always very considerate.
Okay, so if I wanted to take light rail, I could have taken that light rail train right there to here. I could have biked to the light rail station and ended up here instead of burning cows. I'm so late. I'm usually not this late. I guess I won't be doing my hair. I won't be blow drying it. I just slow it down so I could talk without huffing and puffing too much. <laughs> See pedestrian crossing. I like how the bike lane is painted green. It's good. And what's this over here? Looks like a stadium. A new stadium. Uh, someone's charger's in the car. Oh, someone lost their phone. I gotta go around and get that. Oh, sorry. I dropped something. Somebody might want this. Ugh. I'll find out. I'll find the rifle owner. Wink, wink. Oh, that's crazy. Looks like someone lost the battery on this. Look, I found this. That's not a phone worth keeping. Oh, there's the card. Someone dropped their phone. And I'm picking it up. I'm super late, and I can't do my hair today. Okay. I found a phone, but it looked cheap. Screen's not broken. And I found, like, it didn't have a back to it, and then I found the back. The backing. Poor person lost her phone. Okay. Where am I? Does it look familiar? <sighs> 10 hours later. I don't know if you guys are watching this video. If you're watching this video. I applaud you. I'm not gonna lie, I've seen other people's bike videos and I will watch it, you know, or listen, you know. We're isolated as bike commuters. We want to know what's on other people's minds. That phone, it had a cord. I don't know if you saw it. It had a cord and the phone and then the backing to it. I don't know if it's a battery or SIM card. And how does somebody lose something like that? It looks like they threw it out their window. How do you lose it in the middle of the street? Unless you're, maybe you fell out of their backpack. I'll have to turn it on. Check it out. 
All right. I'm in luck today. This road is closed, and this is probably the most dangerous part of my ride. How many bridges have I crossed? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think I've crossed seven bridges, including overpasses. Seven, and this will be my eighth. very easily around that. Okay. So, people are often scared of riding with cleats. <laughs> that you clip onto your pedal. And I was scared too in the beginning, but I think they're better than those, those things where you put your shoe in the stirrups or whatever they are. Those are cumbersome. Cycling shoes are the way to go. All you do is twist your foot to get out of them. Don't be fearful of them. You know? All right. Well, guys, this is it. This is the end of the road. Here, look at that. Do you see it? It's a historic town back there. This is it for me. All right. Well, I hope you review this video multiple times and find it fascinating more than once. Thank you for watching and have a good day. And maybe I'll do another one of these, who knows? I look forward to making more videos.